Hello, good day everyone. Today, let's learn about one example of autoimmune disorder known as rheumatoid arthritis. So, what is rheumatoid arthritis or RA? Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic and progressive autoimmune disease which primarily affects the joints, usually the hands and feet, which will cause inflammation, pain and stiffness. RA is a systemic disease which will also affect the whole body like muscles, cartilage, ligaments and organs such as heart and lungs. Now, let's look at the epidemiology and prevalence of rheumatoid arthritis. Out of every 100,000 people, 71 are diagnosed with RA every year. About 1.5 million Americans have RA. Women are about two to three times more likely to get RA than men. Hormones in both genders may play a role in either preventing or triggering it. RA generally starts between the ages of 30 and 60 in women and somewhat later in life in men. After looking into a simple introduction of RA, do you know what is the main difference between a normal joint and a joint with rheumatoid arthritis? Their main difference can be seen clearly on two things, which is the presence of penis and also inflamed synovial membrane. Okay, now let's look at the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis. First, it all started when CD4 T helper cell is activated. These cells will release cytokines such as interferon gamma and interleukin-17. Then, macrophage will be recruited to release more cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, and interleukin-6. The release of these cytokines such as TNF-alpha and interleukin is responsible in the disease progression by first causing the synovial inflammation. This will further cause the thickening of synovial membrane, which is called penis. Next, it will also activate fibroblasts and chondrocytes to release matrix metalloproteinases such as MMP1 and MMP3, which leads to the cartilage degradation and joint erosion. Lastly, TNF-alpha is also responsible in activating osteoclasts and causes bone resorption and erosion by increasing the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand on T cell. Now let's discuss further on the signs and symptoms and also risk factors of rheumatoid arthritis. Before that, let's look at a short scenario between a mother and a doctor. Hello, Kaka. Are you busy now? Hey mom, no, just gonna go have a lunch now. The pharmacy was quite busy today. <laughs> Listen, I wanna ask you something actually. What is it, mom? Did something happen? Are you okay? Lately, I feel pain and swelling around my fingers and also my elbow. Uh, I also feel like uh, some nodules between my fingers. It's very painful and uncomfortable. Is it normal, darling? Do you have a fever or feel weak or something? Yes, I do feel weak and sometimes got fever. Why, well, You are also at a higher risk of getting rheumatoid arthritis. You are female and already 15 years old. Genetic factor can also be the reason behind that because, as I remember, like grandma also had rheumatoid arthritis, right? Yes, you are right. But are you sure I'm developing, uh, what is it again? Rheumatoarthritis? We better refer to the doctor after I go home, yeah? Okay, dear, drive carefully, yeah? In the video, we can see some of the ring factors and also signs and symptoms of RA. Besides what we can see in the video, what are the other ring factors? The other factors may include obesity, smoking, and toxin exposure. It may cause parasitic infections such as mycoplasma and Epstein-Barr virus. Now, let's look into more details for the signs and symptoms of RA. Person with RA may present with polyarticulate inflammation, rheumatoid nodules, structural deformities, low-degrade fever, myalgia, fatigues, weight loss, and extra-articulate features. Do you know how is rheumatoid arthritis being diagnosed and what are the red parameters they are looking for? Let's look at the following videos to know more.
swelling and like pain between her fingers and joint. Also, she complained that she feels some nodules between her fingers also. Can I check this? Ms. Doctor, can you check my condition please? Sure, madam. My pleasure. How have been you experienced all this? Um, I think it's been a few weeks. Let me check. Seeing that there are a few joints that are inflamed and swollen, let me do some let me do some tests for confirmation. Based on the video, besides physical examination on the joint, the diagnosis of RA can be based on the number of joint involved, inflammatory markers, serology tests, and also durations of symptoms. This is a table of rheumatism criteria for RA. For the blood test of RA, positive results for rheumatoid arthritis will show an increase in erythrocyte sedimentation rate, increase in c reactive protein, serum alkali phosphates, platelet count, neutrophil, and also symptoms of normocytic anemia. Besides, the rheumatoid factors will also show a seropositive is present of RA. How can we manage rheumatoid arthritis or RA? There are two types of management which are non-pharmacological treatment and pharmacological treatment. In non-pharmacological treatment, patient education is very important in the management of RA. It should include information of the diagnosis, nature of the disease, and risk of therapy options to improve patient's understanding and compliance to treatment. The next three treatments are effective in reducing morning stiffness, pain, and functional capacity, which are occupational therapy, physiotherapy, and podiatry. Occupational therapy includes joint protection with hand strengthening and mobilization exercise, while physiotherapy includes transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and aerobic activities. And for the podiatry, patients are advised on a proper footwear and are recommended to wear customized orthotic insoles. The last non-pharmacological treatment is dietetic. Patients should be educated with the benefits of eating more vegan diets, elimination diets, and introduce more polyunsaturated fatty acids. There are three main drugs in pharmacological treatment, which are NSAIDs, steroids, and DMARDs. All these three drugs can be used to reduce swelling and inflammation. For NSAIDs, it should be used judiciously in patients, especially to those with comorbidities because of its adverse effects. It can also be used as an adjunct to DMARDs for pain relief. Some of its side effects include dyspepsia, nausea, diarrhea, gastric or duodenal ulcer, edema, hypertension, congestive heart failure, and chronic renal failure. There are two types of NSAIDs which are non-selective NSAIDs and COX-2 inhibitors. The examples of non-selective NSAIDs include ibuprofen, ketoprofen, diclofenac, and naproxen, while COX-2 inhibitors include meloxicam, atoricoxib, and salicoxib. For corticosteroids, it is reserved for acute conditions, especially injections. Its effects last for 4 weeks, so it should not be repeated more than 3 times per year. It should be used for short term. However, if a patient is put on long-term treatment, gradual reduction of dose is needed. Long-term use of corticosteroids predisposes to complications such as osteoporosis. Hence, this patient should be supplemented with calcium, vitamin D, and biphosphonates. Some of its side effects include diabetes, hypertension, weight gain, increased risk of infection, and gastrointestinal problem. Prednisolone is one of the corticosteroids that is administered orally, while triamcinolone and methylprednisolone are administered through intramuscular route. The next treatment is DMARD or disease-modifying antirheumatic drugs. It can be classified into three groups which are conventional synthetic DMARDs, which is used to minimize disease progression, biological DMARDs, which is a genetically engineered monoclonal antibodies, and targeted synthetic DMARDs, which has a faster onset. Here are four examples of CS DMARDs. First is methotrexate, which is a first-line treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. However, it is contraindicated in pregnancy, so it should be stopped three months before conception. Some of its major side effects include bone marrow suppression, lung and renal toxicity, hepatotoxicity, dyspepsia, oral ulcers, and pneumonitis. Folic acid can be given to prevent these side effects. 
Second is sulfasalazine. Its major concern is blood dyscrasias, and the side effects include bleeding, sore throat, bruising, fever, malaise, dyspepsia, rashes, and bone marrow suppression. Next is hydroxychloroquine, which is the least toxic and the least effective DMARDS, so it is used in mild rheumatoid arthritis. It can be used in pregnant ladies, and its major concern is retinopathy, so patients should have baseline eye exam and ophthalmic review while on treatment. The last example of CSD marks is leflunomide. Its action can be seen in one month. Patient who is on leflunomide should avoid pregnancy for two years. Some of its side effects include hepatoxicity, hematoxicity, rashes, and bone marrow suppression. For BD marks, the first example is anti-TNF. The drug in this class includes infliximab. It requires less monitoring and less frequent dosing. Some of its side effects are local site injection and infusion-related, headache, sepsis, and lymphoma. The second example is rituximab. It requires two infusions, so it should be repeated every six months. Some of its side effects are change of blood pressure, fever, rashes, increased risk of infection, and worsening of angina. Both anti-TNF and rituximab should not be taken when having an active infection. The third example is tocilizumab, which is given as monthly infusion. Other examples of biological demands include colimumab, abatacept, and anakindra. For TS DMARDS, it has a better safety profile than B DMARDS. The example of drugs are tofistinib and baristinib. It can be used as a monotherapy or combination with CS DMARDS. Its side effects include headache and flight symptoms, and it is contraindicated in pregnancy. TS DMARDS and B DMARDS are both effective in early onset and should be considered when treatment target is not achieved with CS DMARDS. Patients who are on TSD marks and BD marks also should be screened for TB, HIV, and hepatitis prior to treatment to prevent the activation of latent viral infection. Moving on, let's talk about the complications of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis can put you at a higher risk of developing other conditions, particularly if it is not well controlled. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory condition which can cause inflammation in other parts of your body. Hence, it may cause lung problems, eye problems, heart disease, and blood disease. The inflammation of the lungs can cause pulmonary fibrosis, which can lead to chest pain, persistent cough, and shortness of breath, while the inflammation of the tissue around the heart can lead to pericarditis. Besides, the inflammation of the eyes can lead to scleritis. Vasculitis, which is known as the inflammation of the blood vessels, will cause the thickening, weakening, narrowing, and scarring of the blood vessels' walls. In serious cases, it can affect blood flow to your body organs, which can be life-threatening. However, with early treatment, inflammation in other parts of the body from rheumatoid arthritis is less likely to occur. Moreover, rheumatoid arthritis can lead to stroke, diabetes, sleeping issues, depression, anxiety, and osteoporosis. Lastly, let's look on another video to learn on what are the counseling points to be given for patients with RA. In short, the process of assessing, monitoring, auditing, and evaluating disease activity, progression, and the therapy regimes impact on the patient with rheumatoid arthritis is ongoing. Person-centered care, as well as monitoring and analyzing symptoms, outcome, and therapeutic responses are critical to manage the disease and improve the patient's quality of life. That's the end of this video and all about what is rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you for your kind attention and hope you are now more understanding on this disease. Once again, thanks for watching.